everyone, Joe here from Action X. Welcome to What's in the Two. Welcome back. If this is your fourth The Rookie Season 6 episode review, it has been a long time. I'm going to be honest with you. This, this, honestly, I'm going to be completely honest with you. It, this, this has been my longest, um, well, it, it's felt my, my longest break between What's in the Two episodes. Between, like, it's felt longer, like, the Rookie Season 5 ending to Rookie Season 6 premiere. This three-week break felt much longer than I felt like it to be. And keep in mind, my life has um, been a bit more different lately. I think around the time the rookie came back, like my life, it was already like changing a little bit. Not for worse. It was just like things had changed with my personal life, my uh, my my work life. That um, that you know, I didn't really start feeling until when we were on the break. And you know, the, the, these last three weeks, you know, we. I do apologize. We haven't been making as much content as we have been. My personal life did definitely take over a little bit. I, I do apologize. This episode review is very late. Uh, we're three days late. It was supposed to be four days late, but um, I decided to um, sacrifice my sleep just a little bit just to kind of, you know, get things back on the roll. Hopefully, don't worry. Next week, we will be um, back on the money. We will be back to work on everything. Um, so don't, don't you quite worry about that just quite yet. But uh, until then, you know, it's just... I nearly forgot the rookie came back. And... And that's not to say that's a bad idea for promotion, but it, I definitely felt like, yeah, like, also the announcement that, yeah, the Rookie Season 6 is only going to have 10 episodes, so uh, by end of next week, we will already be halfway through the season, uh, which, again, not crazy to think about. Again, the strikes definitely did delay a lot of things. The fact we're even getting 10 episodes is still a miracle. Hopefully, we will get that, you know, Magic Season 7 announcement very, very soon to kind of at least hold us over that, okay... It's only 10 this spring, but this fall, we will be back to normal. We will produce a full season of content again. That's what I personally can't wait about. Uh, but that's quite not here yet. But for now, again, I do apologize for everything. Uh, hopefully next week we will be all back to normal. I'm very backed up on my workload uh, because, uh, again, like I said before, this is a, a hobby where at times my personal life, sometimes my work life, uh, my family life, they, they all can have moments where... I need to focus on them. And I definitely do try my best to make everything work on this end. But at the same time, there will be periods going forward where I might not be able to get to everything live. And I'm being honest, but I do try to dedicate myself that you will get at least the content, at least at a respectful point, nothing too late uh, without anything. So again, I do apologize. But that, with all that, that, all that, you know, back soft story out of the way, let's get to this episode where... It's felt like no time has passed, you know, obviously we had the little 100 episode, we had episode one-on-one, -on -one. it's been like a different kind of world, like, you know, we had Nolan and Nolan's wedding, we had the 100 episode spectacular, we had the fun island trip away, um, de dealing with Lucy's detective exam, we had a lot of things to worry about in the last, in, in those first three weeks, now this kind of feels like the beginning of another three-week arc, in a way, it kind of felt like, you know, things are a little bit more... Like, again, those, the reason why I say these three weeks have been, like, longer than I felt, because by the time we got, I got back into, like, watching The Rookie again, it felt more like more time has passed than needed. And maybe that was on purpose, maybe it wasn't, whether or not they wrote these episodes with the break in mind. But again, The Rookie's always been, like, kind of in control of their own timeline. They never really fall order to, like, everything. Else. I feel like if everything's still active, they're in the fall previously, while well, we're airing this in the spring. So, maybe that's just a one accoutrement there. But with this week's episode, going back to it, um, everything seems to be kind of like, we're kind of going back to normal. You know, no one's back on patrol. Lucy's kind of reeling from the detective exam results. Aaron's finally getting really into, like, the meat of, like, you know, his uh, psychological issues to an extent. And, um, yeah, we're kind of pursuing the regular story a little bit more so. Um, not, like, the big story. We haven't really gotten much updated that since the first episode, which... Again, we are a little overdue for some progress, you know. Again, I know The Rookie doesn't follow a traditional, like, television storyline where, like, you know, every episode we get little nuggets leading towards, like, the next thing. It's always kind of been its own thing. Um, but I feel like now that we're, like, past three episodes in, uh, since we got the, the revelation at the end of the season premiere, that I feel like we're... I feel like by next episode, we kind of need to have that sort of like, yeah, now we kind of need to like, you know, let's loop back around. It's been a while. But otherwise, I think this was a really good episode to get back to it. Definitely had some questionable moments. But again, I feel like that's just the reality of things. Like, you know, we kind of been under this like, you know, facade for a little bit, in my opinion. Maybe not. Who the hell knows? Uh, but it, it kind of felt like some, some story aspects were a little bit like kind of more traditional, like, 
cliches in a way, but the rookie still kind of like turns it on its head in a way. Uh, maybe because again, we're now six seasons in, like there's only so much they could possibly do. That's not, that's not a negative thing to say about it. It's just like, I noticed like the one storyline was like, you know what? Did we really need like the way that was presented to be? And you know, it, <laughs> it could be any number of things, but still I'm just like, okay, maybe you should just like loop this back around. But with that all being said, let's go for the butcher recap and talk about this week's episode of The Rookie. So we begin with, huh? Actually, I actually do forget what we we be. Oh right, right, right. We begin with Aaron kind of going through the motions again of how he got shot, just like reeling in from all that. He's telling his psychiatrist that, and after the end of it, where he's kind of like, kind of reached like that midpoint where like he's kind of accepting of it and he's ready to like finally move forward properly now that he's finally you know really let go of the material and the psychiatrist just like okay you're cleared you're good to go and i'm like that's great that's perfectly great it's been a, it's been a little bit but you know thankfully um that's all well enough. again the way they kind of formatted the psychiatrist to kind of be like you know something a little bit more serious whatever again maybe they could be, they could do that later down the road but i'm like i don't know like i was expecting this to go a little while longer but again there's only so much you could do uh with aaron being behind the station uh office office has for so long there's only so much you got to do otherwise we're gonna get another repeat of season five to an extent uh we cut up into the next day where lucy is still reeling from the results of her detective exam she's kind of giving tim hey look it's perfectly fine it's not what i wanted but you know what two years from now i'll retake it i'll try and get a higher position it's fine it's perfectly fine obviously Again, like I said before, Lucy of the entire, like, the OG rookie staff, she's kind of not really had much of a turn, like, a progression. You know, Nolan went to P2. Uh, Aaron's now in Metro. No, not Aaron. Um, Tim's in Metro. Um, Harper's a full-time detective now. Lopez is now a detective. Like, everyone's in the OG cast has moved up a little bit. But not Lucy. And, you know, I feel like, you know, this was kind of her chance to, like, you know, all right, it's time. You know, everyone's kind of, like, moving on up. It's my turn. And the fact that, you know, the her previous actions indirectly caused where she is now, where for sure, to an extent, she's not going to have any sort of movement for two years. So that means she's stuck on patrol for two years is... Honestly, it's kind of it's it's kind of weighing on her a little bit, you know. It, on the back end, thankfully, Tim is there to kind of provide that, you know, the boyfriend loving loving arm and the support, which again, you know, still kind of getting used to. You know, this is definitely not the Tim Bradford I would have been I would have expected like three seasons ago, but definitely it is someone that has grown into this role of like, yeah, Lucy needs that dependable dependable partner. I'm that partner, so I got to do what I can to provide for her. Um, and however, Nolan comes in, barging in, it's like, hey, sorry about the detectives. And but the way he delivered it was just like, hey, sorry about the detectives. I'm like, dude, you know this woman already. Technically, you know her longer than Bradford. You should know how to correctly say things to her. I know you're a, you're, you're you are who you are, but still. Uh, Lucy walks away. She she doesn't want to deal with it right now. Uh, but however, all that gets turned around where uh, everyone's welcoming back Aaron back to the fourth. He's going to be back on patrol today. He's back to work. Everyone's very happy about that. Except for good old Gray, who is a bit, who's a bit curious to think that he might not be ready. As sometimes officers that kind of, you know, go into that situation, they do come back to active duty, but they'd rather be stuck in a turtle, be, you know, be more restrictive on which calls they take, want to take more of the, the easier work or stuff like that. And they're kind of like, you know, being in a turtle show. We're like, they're still there, but they're just not... They're not as movable as before, especially even if, if you're a turtle. And Bravo decides, you know what? I'm on board. Let's give him a test. Let's see if he is truly ready to get back out there, which he's about to take the train test. The, yeah, the train. Yeah, not the, tra actually, no, I'm, 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 I'm about to get, I'm going to get lost. My brain's a little tired, everyone. So I'm, I'm not going to get lost into my own stupidity right now. So, um, yeah, so I think after that, yeah, so everyone kind of just kind of begins their day. Aaron gets recruited by Tim to go on these, um, to, to go on the train test, you know, go on patrol with him for the day. See how that, see how his day go, goes about. Um, Nolan and Lo da, 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 Selena go answer a, uh, a call in the park. Poirs is trying to get like a little bit of like a, see what, what's, what, what, the, what has Bradford and, um, Harper been telling you like, about me? You know, where, what do I stand in the program? So far, which again, I have no idea 
where the hell is she at? She's at. I mean, again, like, you know, it's a year program, so um, she's still in the long sleeves. So I'm assuming we're still in the first six months. I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's, again, for me, it's kind of weird to an extent where, like, again, like a, a traditional procedure would, like, be following the, the order to order of the years. And, like, you know, again, what now with Selena being in that year time span, like, someone's got to redo that rookie timeline. Someone's got to, like, figure out where the hell we are right now in the timeline. Um, the, and no one's like, you know, just tells her, find out, yeah, you're still a work in progress, which again, you're not even for the first half of your training. That is perfectly acceptable, a standard for you to be at right now. So you just kind of, you know, take it as may right now just keep going, just keep doing what you're doing. And then we'll, we'll, we'll get to that next point when we get there. Um, they, they answer the call, they go inside the, some um, the park bathroom and they find a woman, um, already dead, uh, in the bath stall, but they already c conclude that, you know, the woman did not die in the bath stall considering the fact there's no evidence of like any sort of like struggle or anything that it literally looks like a perfectly fine bathroom with a dead woman in the middle of it. So definitely she was moved there. Um, uh, they call Harper and Lopez over if they confirm it. Uh, but the one creepy thing about it is that they lift up her shirt <laughs> And there's a pentagram symbol, and Lopez immediately remembers, yeah, there was a killer back in the early 2000s that was, uh, they they would brand the pentagon, uh, the pentagram in the in the in the in the uh, the victim's uh, abdominal area. So this might mean he's back again. Even no one said like, oh yeah, Hulu just did a documentary about him. Maybe you know that's what kind of re re reawakened him a little bit after all this time. Which I'm like, again, I understand we ABC. His own, we have ABC, we have Disney, what who reference. I understand that. The amount of time we have seen this is a little bit too much for me. I, I think we need to like kind of wind down on that a little bit. Let, let, let's wind that back a little bit, a little bit more so. Um Yeah, okay, okay. I want to say where else do we go from here? Yeah, so they're 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 crowding the scene. Nolan tells uh Juarez to kind of like just let um Gray know they're like, hey, the Pentagon killer might be back, just be on alert. However, Hawaris forgets to be notified that she's not supposed to get information on the scanners. Because again, scanners are on public broadcast. So technically anyone with a radio scanner, all the paparazzi, all the reporters, they have access to those scanners. So the fact that even the name Pentagram Killer is back in the airways, it's going to create a mass panic right now. And so that's an immediate red flag. That's an immediate no-no. That's a, that's a big red flag. Um, so... Yeah, they're kind of screwed in the pooch. They're kind of ordered back to go back to the station right now and issue a very big old apology to Gray, who's about to rip into their ears while um, Lopez and Harper decide to figure out what's next for them to do to kind of see where they can follow up on this, considering the fact they're about to get a mass outpour call that will be probably unrelated to this whole thing. It's just, in general, like, people will just use this as some sort of semblance of possession. And hold on, I need water because my throat... I've been talking all day, so... I do apologize. So, where was I with that? Yeah. So, um, Chen shows up. She tries to kind of, kind of slither her her way in there. You know, trying to be part of the group again. And again, that's kind of the really shitty thing of how they frame this episode. Where like they kind of leave Chen in the sideline. Like, uh, again, could this be retaliation for last uh, last season where she told when she told um, Aaron that yeah, I'm one of the cool kids now, and I'm like. I knew it would come back to bite you in the ass. I knew it would come back. And here it is. We're like, you know, again, no one in Juarez in, in big cahoots. They got to they gotta get over the, to Gray right now. They don't got time to talk. And Lopez and Harper, again, you know, they're on active duty. I completely understand they are friends. But at the end of the day, you know, you're on duty. You're, you're at work. You know, sometimes the work is more prioritized than your friendship. So... Sadly, they kind of just leave her like, okay, you can go guard the Southwest Corner. Because again, Chen is not a detective. She's she's not the assigned officer on this matter. So she kind of has to go and be just like a regular patrol officer, sometimes doing the grunt work, which again, which we completely forget about, you know, just because we kind of, we constantly get th these cool cases that the regular patrol officers get to do. That's not always the case. And, you know, so sadly Chen is sometimes, well now, nowadays has to get the, the lower end of the stick. So, uh, she kind of like meanders over to her corner, uh, Bradford and, Sorry, uh, Aaron head over to their first call. And again, you know, Bradford's main priority is like, yeah, I just need to make sure you're not a turtle, that you're not going to like kind of, you know, slither into your shell and kind of just be like this recluse officer in the station. That should not be you. You need to get it back out there. This, this, this test will perfectly assess if you are ready to truly be back out there. 
Um, so they answer a call. Uh, apparently, a guy was supposed to show up for a court hearing or something like that. He never showed up. Uh, he did att assault an officer. Not the same guy from the one episode, just a different guy. Uh, they head inside. The guy's already in a full body cast. So um, that's a bit, bit, bit of a weird weird thing for, for them to see. Uh, Aaron tries loading him up in the van. Bradford's like, okay, this is too embarrassing. I'm calling over, like, you know, a giant van to take him over there. Um, then they notice a woman and, uh, approaching the house that they just arrested him at. Aaron goes to try and ask her the question, what are you doing here? What, what's your purpose here? And, uh, you know, she's trying to play it off as, like, you know, some sort of religious thing. However, she's just like, okay, hold on. I'm, I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to leave. Uh, she starts running away. Uh, she even tries to assault Aaron with, with her purse. It doesn't work. And uh, when, she, uh, when her purse falls on the ground, like, a bunch of money starts falling out there. So definitely she's kind of landing herself into some cahoots over here. We cut back to the station. Um, Nolan and Chen, um, Nolan and, and, and um, Juarez, they're just getting the, they're getting it deep. They're, they're really getting the full volume of Grey. It's been a long time since I've seen Grey yell at Nolan. It's been a long time. And sadly, we do not get to see the full effect of it. Um, Harper and Lopez are kind of just like looking back into the case a little bit, you know, early 2000s, you know, they're just talking about their experiences of where they were at the time of their lives. They're just hoping that eventually something will pop up. Um, they do do some research on the victim. She is a, a grade school teacher. So she works with kids. So hopefully that, that means she's a nice person, right? Not all the time, to be honest with you. Um... Oh uh, yeah, so um, Selena and Nolan finished finished getting their beating from Gray. So right now their punishment is to respond to every single minuscule call related to the Pentagram Killer, even if it has nothing to do with the case. They got no choice. They have to only take those calls as punishment for um, for Juarez's actions. Um, so they they immediately head out over there. Um, Chen calls Harper in to see if like, hey, I found this random piece of throw up. Maybe this could be something to the case. And Harper's like, well. Maybe yes, maybe no, but you know what? Just in case, we we will send evidence over there to come collect it. But it might take a while since like, you know the main crime scene is over there in the distance, so they kind of have to go all the way back there. It kind of could take some time, so you may need to wait a bit, like at least four hours at best. So again, sometimes that's just the bulk of the day, just watching throw up. It's all about chain of custody, just making sure that every little rock is not left unturned. And again, that happens sometimes. That, that definitely can happen at, at a various intervals of time. Um, so, so after they book both of them, you know, um, Tim, Tim asks Aaron, how do you assess them? What do you think the connection is? Do you think this is worth something worth exploring a little bit deeper? Or do you, do you think we should just leave them in the holding cell? Let, let whatever happens, happens to them. And again, you know, the thing with Tim is that Tim is very much a great teacher. He definitely wants you to figure it out on your own. But the way he acts of like... I don't know. Maybe you did find it. Maybe you didn't find it. I don't know. I can't say yes or no. It's kind of like something that you got to figure out on your own. It's like, it's one of those like, I know more like, just tell me, am I missing something? But then again, you know, he's trying to teach them to be a better office about like, you know, trust your own judgment, trust your own instincts. Don't like listen to others for like trying to figure out answers uh, about it. Um. So yeah, from there onwards, I want to say, Sorry, we cut back over to Juarez and Nolan. They're just digging through the calls in the center. Nothing is like, you know, being stand out of it. But there is one woman who called in that her former husband, her husband, who is a fisherman, was uh, supposedly to be the pentagram killer. So they say, you know what? Kind of legitimate. It's a night, it's a night job. So like it could kind of make sense to why, you know, no one would be seeing him in the public daylight if it was um, someone that was like sneaking around in the middle of the night. So... Um, they follow it up, they, they visit her, and she does say, like, well, yeah, the reason why I say this is because I found this shoebox with uh, ID, the real state IDs from the victims, which are all victims from the Pentagon Killer back many years ago. However, the caveat is that the man supposedly to be the Pentagon Killer is dead. So, although this is, kind of doesn't officially prove anything, I mean, these are official state licenses from back then, so I'm like, yeah, that kind of proves that, like, yeah, this guy has to have some sort of connection to them. You know, this is kind of like the best confession they're going to get right now. So, um, they call the the others in. They forward it in. And again, like, doesn't seem like the official, official way to get the guy. 
No, no, really. But, you know, but definitely this kind of creates the question, then who did kill the, the woman? You know, if the Pentagon killer is technically dead, then who who did this? You know, what, what copycat kind of did this now? You know, are we dealing with another copycat killer? Uh, we don't need to get, get another one of those already. We, we had we had fun a fun old time with the last one, so... Um, so, but either way, they're being, now they're being commended, like, 20, like, two, three hours ago, they were being insulted and lectured for their mistake. Now, Greg comes in, like, hey, by the way, you guys found the pentagram killer, so you're gonna go down to City Hall and give a, a little, a little saying, a little speech, and I'm just like, damn. Okay, now I'm starting to see, like, yeah, no, no, Nolan's getting too much of the easy street way. I mean, I, I, I love Nolan. I really, really do. Uh, it seems like no one hasn't had like a real major adversity since season four. I'm just being completely honest there. We we've now are in the second season of Nolan, just kind of like easy street. Not like not like you know like it, it's not easy to be a to. It's not easy to like, you know be who you are. I'm not trying to say that at all, but it, it kind of seems like no one's kind of getting like the shiny end of the stick. Like, and, but again, I do understand the show's called the Rookie, and no one is the Rookie in an extent. So I kind of do understand where they're going at, but still, like, I don't know where I'm going with it. I'm, I'm losing sidetrack here. Um... Yeah, so Aaron decide, Aaron, Aaron and, and Bradford do a little bit more research on, on everything and say, you know what, let's press let's press the one further. Let's see if we can actually, you know, get something out of this. Let's see if we can actually like, get some sort of, like, you know, uh, reasoning out of this. And Bradford's like, you know what, you're totally right. Because of that, I'm going to give you nine minutes to figure this all out and, like, you know, get this entire case solved in nine minutes. And I'm just like, damn, can't even get him ten minutes. Like, it's got to be nine. Which, again, I do respect him for that. It's not your traditional ten. It's your untraditional nine. So that makes sense. Um, so, so Aaron runs into the interrogation room. Honestly, I'm completely impressed. He managed to get an entire conf a, a pseudo confession out in like seven minutes. And again, Bradford's like, "Yeah, touche." It actually seemed like you actually got the deal. But again, he does one of those Tim moments where like, maybe you got everything. Maybe you did it. This is one of those you you don't know, you don't quite know type of thing. Kind of have to like you know just let it be for now and figure out what happens next. And Aaron's just kind of like again struggling to like saying like just tell me if I'm right or not. Which again that's not the morals of a police officer, but you know again it is what it is. Um, Lucy's just watching the entire news report from the station. Again, I feel for Lucy. Where again she is needing a win right now and being assigned to this case could have been her big break it could have been the big thing that she could have needed to like break out of the rut he she even tells bradford that kind of hopefully like if this was on the news that like lucy chen found the pentagon killer or she just stumbled upon it she, it would have been like a great boost of her uh morale uh, of her confidence but it didn't it went to nolan nolan and juarez and Bradford's like, that's just the nature of the job. You know, sometimes you're going to have the win, sometimes you're going to have to lose it. It's like, I still remember the phrase they said when, when Gotham was first beginning. It's like, there will be, there will, there will be small victories, but they're, you know, those big victories don't come that often. Um, but yeah, but, but, but either way, you know, again, Bradford's trying to be in between. We're like, you know, he, he is trying to be the supportive boyfriend, but at the same time, he's being realistic that, you know, tomorrow you could be the hero sometime, And then tomorrow you're going to also be back on throw up duty. Every day is different. You are on patrol. You're not always going to have those great days. And, you know, he's just being honest there. And I do respect him for that. I really, I really, really do. Um, yeah, no one, no one barely kind of toast to their little mini victory, I guess. But, you know, still, they still got to figure out who the hell the killer is. That's a whole completely different ball and whack, whack sort of thing that they got to figure out, you know, very much soon. Um, Aaron's staying back to do some paperwork. Gray visits him just to make sure he's doing all right. And um, Aaron's like, yeah, this is that kind of still stuck in this whole, like, am I doing the right thing? Am I exploring all the avenues? It's, like, it's kind of like one of those, I don't know if I'm doing everything correctly. I don't know if I'm still missing something. Right? If I, if I feel like I'm back at square zero again. Um, and the other thing is that Gray also tells him that the person that he was trying to save from the woman's confession, when she was revealing that, like, yeah, I was giving this guy the money because he was about to go to prison and my, my husband's in prison. So I was just trying to see if he could be just his protection service while he's away. So that was kind of like the the goal right there, uh, but sadly the guy that they were trying he was trying to protect us already died. So uh, sadly Aaron was already too late to to, to go do that. Um, so yeah, we cut to the next day. Um, they're kind of reviewing things now. Now that the Pentagon killer is kind of like you know figured out, squared away to an extent. Now they got to figure out who the copycat killer is. Uh, apparently they found out the grade school teacher has a lot of enemies. 
for some reason that they don't explain. Uh, they don't. They don't explain why she's a horrible person. She's just proven to be a horrible person. Um, so a lot of people wanted to kill her. So now she has tons of enemies. So that kind of like sadly widens the board game of like who potentially could be the murderer in, the, in this case. So now they got to go hunt that down a little bit. Um, Nolan gets a call from the woman that he, that uh, was the wife of the pentagram killer, um, asking him like. Please help me out. I just got reporters all over the place. I can't get privacy. They took away my front door, which I'm like, what the fuck do you need a front door for? The man's been dead for years. It's not like you're going to get any DNA samples off it. Jesus Christ. At least provide a loner door or something to that extent. Uh, uh, but yeah, so they resume everything. Um, Bradford and Eric are kind of... Oh, no, yeah. So Eric goes back to his therapist, seeing if he can find like a different, a different angle of like what's going on. Um, eventually they do reach this, like, breaking point where, like, Aaron's really like, wait, hold on. Maybe it wasn't, like, you know, if, if the, the guy was supposed to be protected once the other guy got to the, to, to prison, then why was he already dead before the money got into the, into his possession? So, definitely something's up here. Something's a little fishy here. So, they call back over the woman. Um, they try to get any new information out of her. Uh, she randomly picks up some guy from a lineup of people that her husband supposedly knew. Um... However, they already catch her eavesdropping in the uh, in the elevator, kind of calling someone, saying that, "Hey, by the way, you know, my husband's still dead. So what are we gonna do? Like, you know, this was not part of the plan whatsoever." But they bugged the elevator. They got all the information they need, and it's too late for this woman. She's already been been, been caught red-handed. She even slaps Aaron, which completes his train program. He has been officially cleared formally for active duty. Thankfully, um, yeah. From that point onwards, um. They, they do manage to ID this one very, very, very sketchy guy from the um, the online forums that has been harassing this teacher for, for some time now. And that, you know, he's been very, very aggressive on his language. So um, they go to check him out. But however, when they go visit his house, um, sadly, his wife is already dead. Um, so, yeah, so now that's kind of like a big old like question. I'm like, okay, great. Now, now what? Like, w what's going to happen now? Um, yeah, so they're driving around seeing if they can find the person. Um, they do eventually do spot him somewhere. Um, he's very bloody, very injured, and, um, very much lucky to be alive. He tells them, like, yeah, I was held up by someone, presumably the killer. He was tortured for a little bit, but he managed to get away and everything of the sort. Um, while they're still investigating, uh, on that front, Nolan gets a call from the woman again. Uh, apparently, no, not from the woman again, from dispatch saying that the woman's house that was the Pentagon killer's. Uh, there was a car that just got flipped over or something like that. So, uh, uh, some reporters stuck under a car. So now they got to go over there right now. ASB, that's like the primary focus right now. Uh, so everyone kind of like just leaves Chen behind. It was just like, is there like, hey, what, what's going on? Why didn't anyone tell me? So Chen continues investigating this guy, trying to see if like, hey, by the way, you know, like if you tell me who did this, like I can, I can go find him right now. You just got to give me a description. And this guy's like, he's white, average height, average size, which I'm like, you just basically described the average human being. We live in a, we live in one of the most diverse countries in the world. You have to be a little bit more specific with the person you're trying to identify with. However, that does not really go so well for him as he gets shot. Um, I believe in the chest by a very heavy heavy rifle. Uh, so he gets knocked down. Chen immediately gets into a firefight with with this individual. Um, yes, yeah, so they keep they keep they keep shooting at each other, trying to get each other. Thankfully, uh, Harper and Lopez are already en route. So. Um, they go to help out Chen. They try to coordinate a response. Chen decides to, you know, run in, you know, trying to get the guy off on the side piece while he's focusing on Harper and Lopez. Sadly, the guy's a little bit too smart. Starts aiming for Chen while he's trying to, she's trying to go up the side of the house. And then by the time, um, Chen gets to the back way of the house, he does shoot her, but thankfully armor, uh, armor, um, bulletproof chests, bulletproof armor, Managed to save her a, a little bit, so thankfully she's still um, consciously able. Uh, she goes to approach him. He's still not listening to her demands, and L Lucy has no choice because of her safety to shoot the guy uh, point blank um, in some area up here, up here, but definitely not a, not a killing blow. What 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 per se? Uh, so she goes over for backup. Um, no one Juarez goes to check out the woman. Yeah, the woman did apparently had enough of her privacy being invaded. She did run over the reporter in hopes that they would all walk away. It doesn't work. It didn't really work for her. And she's just like, I'm tired. Like, my life is over. Like, just admitting what had happened. Like, all my friends have abandoned me. They think I'm a monster, too. And, you know, they don't want to even hear my side of the story. Because I don't have a side of the story. I just didn't know about it. But no one believes her. 
So she kind of was at like, you know, at the at the fork of the road over here for this one. She kind of just chose the violent way out, hoping to have a short term solution, which um, it didn't work. So sadly, they had to bring her in because of that, because, again, they have no choice. She did assault someone. There really is no two ways about it. Um, I want to say, yeah, so we're at, we're, we're heading to the hospital. No one gets checked in on Bailey, who was present at the scene. She's all right. Everything's good to go. Um, Aaron tells Selena the news. Yeah, I passed the, the train exam. All is well. It's just I'm here because Lucy, I heard that she got shot. So I just wanted to see if she was doing okay. Um, you know, both kind of being in the same camp in a way. We cut up, we cut open to the, um, the next time. Oh, so I forgot to mention. So the so the guy that got shot, um, the guy that that um that Nolan and and everyone assumed was the actual killer, was actually no. He so he was the killer, all along. It was just he wasn't being he, he was captured by a, a secondary person that we still don't really understand the full motivations of. Well, at least I didn't. I didn't really I didn't really follow that detail point point to point. Uh, but yeah, no, he did it. He got really annoyed. They got into a tussle and he pushed her too too far and you know that uh, that killed her. So. He tried to like pawn it off as another killer in hopes that like he would get kind of like you know be skimming off over there. Um, so yeah, now again, remember this is an internal investigation now to see did Lucy have the full reason to kill this guy if he does die on the operating table or is she safe because he's not dead? Um, so they're waiting the results. Lucy's kind of like you know just in like again like parallel to yesterday where like she's watching Nolan and, and Selena receive this like re really cool honor and now today like. She's just being hailed as like, oh, she killed, she may have, you know, shot someone. She shot someone. And that's kind of like, yeah, that's not what she wanted to get. Tim comes in, doesn't go for Gray right away. He goes straight for Chen. Um, make sure she's okay. Um, Gray and, and Wesley get informed that, uh, yes, the guy survived the surgery, but in case he does die from his injuries at any point now, that's when the investigation will resume. But for now, Lucy's in the clear. She will have no internal investigation on her at the moment. Uh, so they can leave it as, as made there for the time being. Um, and then, yeah, Bradford just tells her, you know, it's fine. Whatever's next, that's tomorrow's problem. For now, let's just go home. And the fact is that that is very hard warrant the fact to say that, you know, Bradford said, we can go home. So, again, that's great to hear. Again, where the hell's Kojo? I, I, fans been demanding for the return of Kojo. Who's watching Kojo? But that was it for this week's episode of The Rookie, which I thought it was good. It was a really good episode. I think it, it was definitely kind of like... Definitely a little bit of like, hey, here's what we've been up to since for a few weeks now. Um, I definitely kind of do understand. I have heard some scuttlebutt online that like no one's kind of being this golden child right now. Like, you know, he's his, his era of suffering, of tormenting is over. That's why that brief yelling from Gray, he's kind of just been getting certain things handed to him. Which, again, I kind of do see that. Uh, I do, and I think I talked about this in, season, in my season six predictions last year, that I do, I would like Nolan to get some sort of adversary again. It's been a while. It kind of seems like everything's kind of too pitch perfect for him. But, um, you know, I trust the writers more, more than myself. So I do hopefully know that they're planning something cool uh, for us to see out of them. Uh, hopefully in the... Um, in the next coming weeks, hopefully speaking, um, Chen kind of going for this, you know, moment of like internal crisis where like her future has kind of been stalled for now. Her present is kind of being questionable. What is next for her? What is, what is truly next? You know, um, all of those are really, really great questions, but like for now, she's just dealing with a couple bad days and hopefully, you know, she will learn from the valuable lessons of it. Like, yeah, you're going to have bad days. Of course you're not bad. Days. Trust me. She's been through worse, but still like just being in this slump period of like not getting, those really good wins have kind of, you know, they're starting to weigh on her a little bit. They, they really are. And Aaron slowly trying to get back out there again. It was great to see. Can't wait to see one more they could do out of that front. Definitely. I don't think he's truly out of the woods yet, but definitely this is a uh, major step in the right directions. And I can't wait to see how that all is going to progress out to be. Um, but for now, of course, my microphone falls at the very end of the review. Um, I'm going to give this episode two, out of, two, out of, two thumbs up for me, as always. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this week's episode of The Rookie. I would love to hear your thoughts down below, as always. But I believe that's going to do it for me today, everyone. So if you're unaware, this has been What's the Two from Action X, reviewing every episode in the sixth season of The Rookie. If you want to know what we're doing normal, what's to do beside our Rookie episode reviews. Uh, hopefully later, if not beginning of next week, we will have our return to the Walker universe with our every with our Every Walker Season 4 episode review. Before that, you'll get the Season 1 review, Definitive Edition. I'm still 
running late on that. I'm doing my best. I only have so many hours in the day and I need sleep. Uh, but if you only care about the rookie, you'll be your luck. We'll be back next week with another brand new episode review. So stay tuned until then. But again, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Like, favorite, share if you want to, and ring that bell um, for next for our next video. But until we see each other again, thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe out there. Be good to each other, and as always, peace out.